Okay, there we go. So I want to welcome, for those of you that are joining in after the fact, I'm Lee Moore Weber, and um, I'm a premium educator, and I will be creating three lovely cards tonight, three mixed media cards, which look like, hang on, i got to grab them all the way from over there. One of them looks like this. Okay, really fun, funky fun. The other one is going to look like this. And last but not least, this one. All right. And I'm going to turn the camera. Uh, I'm going to switch the camera angle or switch the camera altogether. So give me a second. Do, do, do. Camera, camera. Let me know if you can see me. How's that? Can everybody see me and my tea on my oh so bright nails? <laughs> Mm. had to take a sip. Sorry if you heard me slurping. All right, so we're going to get started, and the first card that we're going to be making is this one right here. All right, right here. But before I go ahead and start it, um, what I want to do is I want to show you the collection that we're going to be using because it's brand new, all right, and it's super, super fabulous. And I'm going to say it's mm, probably one of my newest favorites. Um, do you ever find that when you play with something, it kind of becomes your favorite? That's kind of what happens to me. As soon as I touch it, feel it, it kind of becomes my favorite. And I think I'm just going to put the camera up just a little bit so we can get a better view. Um, I just find that when sometimes, unless you play with it, you don't necessarily know what to do with it, which is kind of like the whole point of having us educators, right? Do you like my nails? Are these not super funky? Guess who picked up the color? Hannah did. <laughs> it's kind of nutty. I don't think my husband likes it too much. Anyway, this collection is called Everyday Vintage. And I'm super happy to say that um, IOD, if you didn't know, um, I think it's called Iron Orchid Designs. Yes. IOD is back uh, with Prima, which is super fabulous because their designs are just amazing. This is called Everyday Vintage Love Letter Kit. Okay. And... Uh, I'm going to pull this out because I want to show you the collection that we'll be working with tonight. There we go. And um, look at these little stickers. These are so cute, like super vintage -y, super fun, right? Little arrows, little tabs, right, for mini albums. These are so great for mini albums, by the way, you guys. And you'll see because it's like a collection filled with tags. So... Look at that. I mean, I, I love that. And you'll see um, in a couple days, I think like Monday, Tuesday, I created a layout with this for um, Prima's build a page. So you'll see that as well. Super cute. Look at the backside. Really lovely, really plain. So if you like those plain backgrounds, really cool. Um, so there's a couple of each sheet. Look at this butterfly. I just love how doodly it is. Um, super pretty. We'll be using this one right here tonight. Super gorgeous. And look at the back side. More of that butterfly, but really plain. So you could do 12 by 12 or you could do a mini album, right? And then this one. So gorgeous. I love it. This moment. So pretty. And then that's the back side. And look at those. The gorgeous pen. I know, right? I know you want it. I know you want it. Okay, I won't sing for you. Not on live with Prima, only on my shows. Okay, look at this one. You could totally like cut this out and put a photo in there. Oh my goodness, like you could do that here too. I love that. Look at this postcard. Gorgeous, right? And this looks like it's embossed. Do you guys see that? It's so pretty. They did such a fabulous job. And then that's the back side. And that. Yeah, like if you're into like that, what's that called? That life book, whatever you call it. Um, can you tell I'm not in it? Um, anyway, this is great. It's got tons of little tags everywhere. Look at these. These are so pretty. I love them. Love. And this is one of my favorites because look at the back side. It's that newsprint. Super pretty. And I think this is the last one. I love this title, Our Story. These are all so gorgeous. They did such a fabulous job. And that's the back side. So that's that collection, okay? And um, so we'll be using some of this tonight, and I've already pre-cut um, all of it, so you don't have to painfully uh, watch me do absolutely any of that tonight, which is really awesome for you. 
okay? I'm going to put that off to the side. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you that we'll be creating with tonight is um, these are the beautiful vint everyday vintage flare buttons, and I'm going to get them a little bit up close. Okay, really pretty. Let me take them out of the packages so that they're not so shiny. Um, I think Flying Unicorn has it. I don't know. Look at that. So pretty. But I'm pretty sure they carry a lot of Prima, like tons of Prima. Um, so we'll be using one of these tonight for sure. And uh, this item number is 813369. Okay. Vintage flare buttons. And then my favorites that came this year are the paintables. These, you guys, are unbelievable. And you guys will see me working with these right away, but I just wanted to show them to you really quickly. I mean, these are all on watercolor paper, and you can create your own images, which is so much, you can just, you know, color them however you want. So we'll be using this one tonight, actually, so I'll put it off to the side. This one's so pretty, too. I love this, taking it all in stride. These are all watercolor. Look at this rose, you guys. Isn't that lovely? It's just so stunning. Gorgeous, right? I think I'm using this today as well, if I'm not mistaken. So that's that one. And this one right here, the item number is 813406. All right. Hello. For all of you that are getting on just now. And then the other one, this one, the item number is 813390. Yeah, I know the different sizes are really awesome, right? Okay. This is a really cute memorandum. Like, how adorable. Love these. I'm going pretty fast. Um, and then look at these little sizes. I just love this. Love that one. And then we'll be using this one tonight. We'll be using that right away. Okay, it's one of my favorites. This is so pretty. Like I said, this is all on watercolor paper. Look at this one. Oh, you guys are going to get addicted to these. You just wait because when they first came out several years ago, they were on um, white watercolor paper like this. I actually have one sitting right here. And so they're still really beautiful, but they were white, and I just love how they're cream because you just don't have to worry about, you know, painting that white background. So um, I have a, you know, I have a whole stack of the old ones. Like, look at, I have a stack sitting right there of all the old ones, and I won't get rid of them because I love them so much. So funny. I just love, love, love them. In fact, I'm going to see if I can create a project where I intertwine both of the old and the new and see how it comes out. So anyhow, I'm going to get started. I'm just grabbing my stuff. And what you're going to need for this uh, first card right here, I'm going to put the camera down just a tiny bit. There we go. And I'm going to move this out of the way because we don't need it. Is you're going to need um, a piece of paper, uh, a piece of uh, white, blah, let's start over. You're going to need a piece of watercolor paper, okay? And this one is, a, this card is five by five, so you'll have to cut it at 10 by five. Okay, so 10 by five, got it? And then you're gonna fold it in half, so now you have a five by five. Now, the reason that I'm using watercolor paper is you'll see why, because if you don't, the amount of spray and such we're gonna put on here, it's gonna saturate the paper, and you're gonna have a really, really hard time, um, you know, uh, with with the paper just completely going, you know, warpy on you, all right? So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some matte gel, matte gel medium, and I like to use matte because I don't like the glossiness of the glossy. And what I've done is from the collection that I just showed you, I've gone ahead and cut some strips of paper, just very random strips of paper, okay? You don't have to be very perfect, but I really do love the patterns of them, so, um, so that's what I did. And um, we're going to actually just start placing them on our page, okay? And so I'm just going to grab a paintbrush. Any old paintbrush will do. I'm going to grab something a little bit smaller, actually, just like that. And I'm going to use I'm going to use Liquitex uh, matte 
gel medium, okay? And I'm gonna apply some of this on my paper. And I'm almost gonna start creating a small collage. Now when you're creating this collage, because I'm using, using watercolor paper, I do wanna leave some strips of the watercolor paper showing, okay? Because you'll see, you'll see why as we go along. So right now, what, all you need to do, if you're following along with me, is you're gonna kinda collage the paper, all right? That's your job right now. Very randomly throughout the page. However, you don't want to collage the paper. If you're gonna go horizontal and up and down, you don't wanna do something that's diagonal, okay? It's gonna look really odd. So I'm doing it this way. Okay, just like that, if you have an excess piece. The ripped pieces look really cool if you rip. Looks even nicer. Okay, so right now we're just kind of collaging a little bit. And I think this one, you're not going to see too, too much of it because it's probably going to go in the middle, but you might see a couple things peeking out. This is the thing about layering. Sometimes you, you don't see a whole lot of it, but those little edges that kind of peek out in your project always gives the project, um, you know, some fun and texture. So don't, you know, don't be shy about layering stuff that you really like, okay? People are always really afraid to cover some pretty paper, but don't be afraid. Layering is just, you know, how those layouts and projects come together. I call it the art of layering. Of this paper right here and so not one card is going to kind of turn out the same you'll notice um, you know because you're ripping paper I mean you can't get you can't get that perfect mixed media is kind of free you know one of the things you know I want to talk to you about is I find that people are you know saying to me oh it's so hard you know I'm so afraid to get into mixed media and you know I just don't want to screw up but you know one of the things about mixed media that's really really fun is that you actually get to have that creative freedom because pretty much anything goes whereas when you're creating a scrapbook page you almost have to be a little bit more careful about you know um, you know colors being you know somewhat symmetrical and just you know you can't just um, it just doesn't look as good on a scrapbook page if you're like completely totally free so uh, you have to have some sort of design so this kind of thing kind of gives you a little bit of creative freedom especially if you're talking about journaling and things like that I like this little heart so I really want to use that oops the other way yeah gel medium and I like to use matte you don't want the glossy stuff okay don't do glossy Trust me, I like the heart and I kind of want it to show up. So I think I'm gonna go right there, just like that. All right, so that's about it. I don't think I really need to collage any more than that of the paper, okay? So I'm just gonna put this off to the side for a moment, put the paper aside as well. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take my ribbon and I wanna take this is uh, my favorite ribbon, which you guys know. It's, uh, you guys, I don't know if you'll find it, but it's, I think actually the Flying Unicorn has some 545505, okay? And it's this beautiful lace, and I'll show it to you. But you can use any lace, okay? It doesn't really matter. And then what you're gonna need is some drywall tape, okay? And you can buy these rolls at like Home Depot or whatever those hardware stores for I don't know maybe eight dollars this roll will last you like years I swear years okay so no need to worry about you know investing too much okay and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna need a little bit of ribbon a couple pieces here and there you don't need too much about that much okay and you're gonna put some with the gel medium Have baby wipes ready for me okay. is the height okay can you guys see all right actually before I do that before I put that down 
what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to do my this guy first. I kind of went ahead of myself. So I'm cutting a little strip. Okay. And I'm kind of being like very random like this. Okay. And I'm going to apply this right here. And it just gives the page a little bit of texture. I'm actually going to do it this way. Because we're creating a little bit of texture in mixed media, right? And then you're going to cut another piece. Isn't this super fun? Okay, just like that. Oops. And this is this stuff is sticky, which is really fun, right? And then now we can just overlap this right over top. Just like so. Okay. Don't worry if you get some gel medium over top of it. That's perfect. You want to do that. Did I let you guys answer? Is the height okay? Can you guys see all right? Or is it too high? If it's too high, let me know. Okay. Off camera. How's that? A little bit better? Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit more of this guy. And add a little bit right there. Okay, and then maybe a little bit on the top of what's left over. Oh, is that better? just like that. And then I'm going to cut a little bit of this lace and I'm going to apply a little bit of gel medium. Is that better? Okay. Carrie will let me know. I just texted her back. Let's see. It's so hard sometimes when we're creating. It's like I get off frame because I'm not really watching. I kind of forget about you. <laughs> I won't really forget about you. All right, just like that. And I'm just adding a little bit of gel medium right in there. I just really want that lace to stick. I don't want it to go anywhere. And because it's matte, I don't have to worry about it being all um, shiny after. You know what I mean? Just like that. Perfect, right? Okay, so we got a lovely little collage going on. And uh, now what I want to do is I want to give it... Um, no, I don't want to do a quick piece of that. Now what I want to do is I want to take this cotton tape. This is Prima Cotton Tape. And uh, the item number is 550806. Okay. And there's, what I love about it is that there's three different sizes. Okay. And uh, the size I'm going to take is this one right here. The smaller size. And the rest can go away for a moment. Okay. And these nail, my nails are very brittle right now because I took out my gels. And so it's very hard to do anything with my nails at the moment, it seems like, which really sucks. And there's a little film on there, so we got to take that off. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There we go. Ta-da. I did it. I did it. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to cut a couple strips off strip like that about that's perfect and then I want to take my black stays on ink you want to do this with black stays on or archival something that's not going to run or otherwise it's going to run and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this stamp right here and this is uh, engraver stamp item five six two nine nine one and the one that I'm going to take is this one right here. It's one of my favorites. You guys know that. I, I use it a lot. Okay. And just like that. Okay, perfect. And now what I want to do is I want to stamp my cotton tape. Just like that. It's like making your own little washi tape. How fun, right? And last but not least, left piece. Look at that. Isn't that cute? 
super awesome, right? I mean, I love that cotton tape. Love, love, love it. All right, fabulous. Put that aside. And now what I want to do is, by the way, somebody asked me on one of my shows what my favorite baby wipes are. I have to tell you, Huggies is my favorite because they're super thick compared to Pampers. Just an FYI. <laughs> If you wanted to know, that's what I use. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some very, um, like almost in like these type of patterns. I don't want it to be very perfect. And this is gonna be a pain in the butt because like I said, my nails are so brittle. There we go. I'm gonna pull that off and I'm gonna apply a couple strips here and there. And I'm gonna kind of do it this way. Oops, just like that. And it's sticky, so you can just apply it like that. And then you're going to cut the other strips. Okay. If you can hear stomping, it's Ava running upstairs after her bath, probably naked. <laughs> just saying. Probably naked. My husband trying to run after her. I wouldn't doubt it, because that's just Ava for you. I'm super thankful because my husband. Um, from now on, on Tuesdays for my Tuesday shows, he's actually going to be home. So I don't have to worry about like sitters or anything, which I'm so excited about. And as you can see, I'm just very randomly adding just adding some more of this stuff. Half of it is going to be covered, but whatever, right? Okay, so that's what we got so far. Yes? Fabulous. Okay, we're going to actually move this off to the side for a moment, and we're going to let that sit just for a minute, okay? So just so that it dries, and then we're going to continue. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that paintable that we were talking about, and we're going to do a little bit of painting, which is so much fun, okay? You guys are going to fall in love with these. For those of you that are really afraid um, to watercolor because you've never watercolored before, this is totally the class for you because you can totally paint like a pro, okay? And all you need, we're going to use three different colors for this particular um, card, okay? And do you want me to get a little bit closer? I am. I'm going to get just a tad bit closer, okay? Just so that you guys can see really well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clean this area really, really well. I hope we can get through these three cards. But at least with one card, you'll kind of uh, get a lot of the techniques, which is really good. <laughs> so if we don't get through all of them, I'm sorry. Teal Damask, okay? So Teal Damask, you're going to, you're going to need a craft mat for this, okay? So you're going to go like this, and you see you're applying it on your um, scrap mat. Then you're going to get uh, Colt's Foot Stamens, which is the yellow, okay? And you're going to apply that on your scrap mat. And then olive vine. I love this green actually. It's just super pretty. Okay, get it really nice and juicy. Now the next thing that you want to do that I like to do is I like to spray each one. Okay, so they're nice and vibrant right now. And now you have some watercolors to play with instead of having to, you know, buy watercolors, right? You just buy the Prima Chalk inks and they're super useful, right? And so I also have a bucket of water sitting beside me. So I'm going to put that right there so that you guys can see it. And so what I'm going to start doing is coloring the um, flower. Now I'm just grabbing some of the yellow. And actually before I do that, I actually like to spray my card and get it nice and wet. And the reason I do that is because it, soften the, it softens the fibers of the watercolor paper. So as soon as you apply the color, the colors will just be able to blend beautifully, okay? So I apply a little bit of water, and then I go ahead and start playing, okay? And some areas will be lighter than others because I don't grab as much. But all you have to do is literally you just follow the image, okay? And then I'll show you how we create some of that shading that I, you know, that I did over here, okay? Which I know the camera's kind of hard to see, but. And all you need is a, you know, a really nice watercolor brush. So now what I want to do is I almost want to stamp this again in the yellow. 
And instead of grabbing um, any more water, I'm going to get the center a little bit darker. Okay. And then all those dark pieces that are, you know, have black in them from the image, I'm going to go ahead and almost make them quite defined with the one that does not have water. Okay, with a pile that does not have water. And you'll see you'll get that really nice shading. So it's almost already done for you. You literally just have to follow the lines. It's almost like painting by numbers, if you will. Really, really easy, you guys. Okay, and you'll just be painting like a complete pro by the end of this. Okay, so the trick really is saturate your, um, give the, the thing a really nice spray. Okay. It's not gorgeous. I love that. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to do the leaves. So I'm just going to clean off my brush a little bit. And I always have a, beside me, I've got like a little cloth and I just kind of wipe, you know, with, I just wipe my brush like so on the cloth. Okay. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to take these two colors and I'm going to start blending them together. Okay. And I'm just like going like this. So maybe starting with the two and I'm not going to dip my brush in the water. I'm going to grab this one already so that they kind of start blending together. Okay. Honestly, this puts me in my happy place. I have to totally and utterly admit this is like my favorite thing on earth is just painting and just having a whole lot of creative freedom. And I'm just grabbing both colors. I'm dipping my brush in both the colors and allowing those colors to really blend together. And just kind of allowing that image to work for me. And because you've already sprayed your image with water, you'll find that it really starts to bleed, which is really beautiful. So it kind of does the work for you. You don't have to worry about, you know, where it's going to go. And if it goes, if the image goes over a little bit, who cares? It's watercolor. Okay. I love these Prima Chuckings. They are so versatile that um, I would really highly recommend them because, you know, you can chuck edges, you can do, you can stamp with them, you can do so many things on, you know, such a, I, I mean, these probably retail for like, what, a dollar something in the US, maybe two dollars something, right? They're not very expensive. So it's one of those things that you almost absolutely want to have in your stash. In my oh so humble opinion. Just saying. Just saying, my little friends. Okay. So I'm just getting right in there. I know you guys can't see those little images, but there's a kind of leaves coming down. Okay, and they're just really tiny. Very, very tiny. So I'm just trying to get them in there. Okay. And there's a tiny little rosebud. So we're going to get that in there. A little bit of the yellow. And a little bit of green right there. There we go. Can you guys see that? Cute, huh? Okay, so the next thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and get the edges. So with the two colors, or the three colors really, right? Just grab all three with your paintbrush. And your because this is kind of sprayed, it's actually kind of dry. So I'm going to give the edges a little bit of a spray again. There we go. And now I'm just going to go with my brush and get those edges. Okay, and allow that image to run. Super pretty. Just kind of give it some shading. Really, really easy, right? Get a little bit of yellow in there. Isn't this fabulous and super easy? Don't you just want to pull out your watercolors? Right, gorgeous little card, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, what did I do with my baby wipe? I'm just going to wipe this up. That's why you want to do it on a craft mat because it's so easy, right? Just wipe it up and continue on. 
So now the next thing I want to do is I want to give this a quick heat set. And this is where I'll kind of take questions if you have any. Do you have any questions, anybody? I use gelatos on this all the time and it works great. Where in Canada? Um, depends where you are in Canada. I get my supplies from Prima, um, but you can also go to, um, in, I'm in Edmonton, so I go to, um, uh, where am I? Edmund, uh, Urban Scrapbooks has them. dry I really soaked it so that's the other thing you really want to soak these puppies in order to um, you want like almost to see them in the back okay do you see how it's kind of dirty in the back you, you kind of want that hang on I'm gonna turn the light a little bit because it's you're getting some crazy glare okay now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my black gelato and uh, this is by Faber Castell design memory craft and I'm gonna go around the edges and I'm just going to highlight the card a little bit okay just like so and then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna rub just a little bit and what it'll do is it'll kind of create um, a shadowy effect which is kind of what you want all right just like so you guys see that it highlights it a little bit better perfect so I'm gonna put my gelato off to the side now I'm gonna bring my card back Okay, so we're going to, oh, last, sorry. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this guy right here, which is the vintage, uh, the flare buttons by Everyday Vintage. And we're going to grab Big Moment and we're going to apply Big Moment right here. Okay, just like so, right? Just like in this card right here. And now we're going to put this off to the side and bring this card back. Now, it's fairly dry, but I'm gonna give it one quick heat set. Who's coming to see me in Australia? <laughs> I'm coming in November. I'll make sure I'll bring chalk inks. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Now, what I'd like to do is I kind of want to go with the same, you know, color scheme and stuff, right? But before I do that, I'm actually going to take, which is a step that I totally forgot, and I don't know how I did that. But anyhow, this is an older uh, stencil, and I can't remember the number, but I know I sent it to Carrie. So Carrie, you'll have to pull out the number. I just can't remember it. Um, it's an older Prima stencil, and I'm just going to take my modeling paste, okay? And I like to use Liquitex modeling paste. And I'm just going to grab one of my knives, and I'm going to apply a little bit of modeling paste, just for some texture and fun. Just a little bit. You don't need like a whole lot. But it creates a whole lot of fun on your page. Trust me. Just trust me. Okay. You just trust me. Just like that. Look how gorgeous that is. Can you guys see that? So pretty. And then on the side right here, because the other pieces you won't see that much, so I'm not worried too, too much about them. I'm not focusing on them anyway. Okay. Just like that. And left. All right. And that's about all we're going to need. And I love these guys because you can like move them around and such. Okay, so there's the modeling paste. 
and then we're going to give them a very, very quick heat set, and then we can get going, and this card will be done very, very soon here. So we'll heat this up, but there's one really cool technique coming up. Eight eight two zero zero six. Awesome. Thank you. And the modeling paste really dries quickly, which is super fun and awesome. Okay, fabulous. Now the next technique that we're gonna I'm gonna show you is really really fun. Okay, and uh, I just I love to do this. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take your yellow, okay, and you're gonna apply this right here, just like so, like this. Okay, on your card. Okay, just very randomly. And then you're going to take your uh, water and you're going to really saturate it. This is why, by the way, we're using watercolor paper, okay? You will not get away with this using regular scrapbook paper. Trust me, I've tried. And you're going to move it around, okay? And you're going to start creating the blending of colors, okay? And the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to apply the teal damask onto your craft mat, okay? Just like so, really saturate it. And then you're gonna apply a whole bunch of water. Like, you almost wanna take your cup and just apply some water. Okay, just like that. And now you wanna take, oops, you wanna take like one of these droppers. You can get them at the pharmacy. And you need like a mini mister. And you're gonna take, you're gonna make sure first of all that your thing is blended. And then you're going to take this guy and you're going to apply it in here. You could do this in a dish. I'm doing it on my craft mat because I'm lazy. And it's actually really fast. Okay. And you don't need a whole lot. And if I need a little bit more water, I just add a little bit more water. Okay. Okay, just like that. I don't need any more than that. Okay, and then I'm going to, where did my, what did I do with my um, baby wipe? There we go, I'll grab another one. That's not a problem. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with my olive vine. Uh-oh, are we okay? Just like so, and then I'm going to spray and get a whole bunch of the green in there. Yeah, it would, but this is super fun and you get the prima colors. <laughs> okay, it's just a technique. You don't want you don't have to use it if you don't like it. And then I am getting the green and doing the exact same thing. You don't need a whole lot. I just wanted to show you something different that you can do. I know not everybody has sprays and such. Whoops. So this is just a really fun way. Okay. Fabulosos. Now I'm just going to wipe this off. Okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take my sprays and I'm going to start playing. Okay. And I'm going to move them around. Just like so. And even watering some of it down. And letting it move around until I kind of get the color that I want. And here's the green. Okay. And here's where the watercolor comes in, right? It really takes it on beautifully. Okay, and then I apply a little bit more yellow because this is this is just kind of how you do it. It's called layering. Apply a little bit of a darker piece right here. And just allowing it to run. Moving it all sides. Like I said, you'll see, this is watercolor paper and you see how um, 
no, you don't dry them in between. They're not going to mud up, which is really beautiful. And then this right here, I'm going to add a little bit. Okay, just like so. Until you kind of have the color consistency that you really want. Okay. But that's kind of how you do it. Just like that. I'm running out of water there. A little bit more yellow here and there. Okay, so just like so. Now, um, I'm going to wipe this up, and I'm going to give this a quick heat set. And sometimes you'll need to add a second layer. But for the purpose of the show, we'll kind of leave it as is. Any questions? In the, I'll be in November. And the, the store names will come out very soon. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. This is pretty good. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dish, and that's right here. Okay. And I'm going to apply a little bit of gesso. Okay. And then I'm going to take a paintbrush, any old paintbrush that I've got. And sometimes I add a little bit of water to make it a little bit watery. Here, we'll add a little bit of this one. Just like that. And it really helps with some of the splashing. But you want it kind of gobby. Okay. Watch your computer screen when you do this, of course. And then you just want to splash a little bit on your page. Okay. Just like so. And then what I like to do as well is I like to take a little bit of that gesso and almost allow for some drippage to occur throughout my page. Okay, and I'll do the same thing right here on this side. Isn't this fun? I don't know, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> I love to do this kind of stuff. And then I give it a quick heat set and then we're just about done with this card. Is Carrie going to Brazil? I'm so flipping jealous. <laughs> Florida would be fun, huh? Oh, Carrie, you're going to have so much fun. When do you get to go? I'm going to jump in your suitcase. <laughs> you want me to come too? I'd love to come. Can't all come. Carrie's going to be a rock star over there. I'll just, I'll just hide and carry suitcase. <laughs> okay. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some, um, no, it's actually not the last thing, but we're going to take some black gelato and we're going to go around some of the edges. Okay. Just like, so it's not super dry. So I'm being a little bit careful. Okay. Just like, so 
And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to give it a quick heat set because otherwise it's going to, um, my next step is not going to work. Yes, if you're watching on Wi-Fi, uh, you might want to plug in. You want me to come to the warehouse to teach? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta call uh, Prima. You gotta let them know. <laughs> Okay, Carrie, let's go to Chile, and then we can stop in my home country in Argentina. How's that? All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the uh, new stamps by Prima. It's the one from the Finnabar collection. It's 960810. Okay. And we're going to take our, uh, where'd it go? Stays on ink. And we're going to apply it like so. And we're just going to give the page a little bit of texture by adding some stamping and it just gives it an extra something okay and very random as you can see okay just like so fabulous now on to the next thing the next thing that we want to do is we want to back this up and I've already pre-cut if I can find it let's see here did I I know I pre-cut it I just don't know where I put it I thought I had put it right beside me, but I lose stuff all the time when I'm doing a show. It's like inevitable. You know what I mean, guys? So I don't know where it went. So we're going to do without it, but that's okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually apply this guy to with, on the card with a little bit of foam dots. Okay. Just like so. And I know I'm applying a lot of foam dots, but I like them to be propped up. You know what I mean? I just don't like it when they, when the, uh, when they kind of cave in. Are we going to be, what's the mat to create and connect? Steph would be awesome at the warehouse. Doesn't she live really close? All right. And ta-ta. There we have our first card. And do you see why I put lots of pop dots? Because otherwise it caves in like this. Okay. So it's a little bit wet. But, oh, sorry. You guys are facing the right way. That is our first card. And on the inside, I'm not going to do it right now on the show, but on the inside, because I want to get on the next card, what I did is I just grabbed some of the paper and I mounted it on here and I just did a watercolor effect like I did earlier on this card. I did it on here. Okay, so really, really easy. Okay, or you could leave it blank. It's up to you and you could just write whatever you wanted. So two beautiful cards, right? Really, really fun and simple, right? And so we'll put those two to the side and we'll get on with the next card because it's really fun and super simple. So the next card right here is this one right here, okay? And so what we're gonna need is our three pinks and kind of the same technique of the watercolor part, okay? So first we'll do the watercolor piece of it. And we're also going to need the green, okay? So we're gonna do Ladybug. And we're going to do raspberry pie. And we're going to do all rose. Okay. I think we're going to get lots on there. I like to get lots. Just like so. And if you give me just a moment, I just need to fill this up really, really quickly. It's very handy having a sink in your studio. Let me just tell you. All right. I'm always thankful for that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush really, really quick. Ooh, I sprayed some of it. That's okay. And so I'm going to start actually with my darkest color because what I want to do is I want to get right in the middle there. Okay. 
So I want to get right in the middle. And again, I'm going to spray this card, okay, just a little bit. And it allows the fibers to open up a little bit and the colors to just kind of run. I'm going to take that second color and start applying it throughout my card. Okay. As you can see, there's no real crazy technique to this, right? It's not like I have to be a pro at watercoloring, which is really cool because for all of you that are afraid to use these type of cards, you don't need to be. You can just create and feel free to create. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush a little bit and grab the lightest color and get right in there. And then now I'm going to continue with my lightest color. And this just provides a little bit of shading. Okay. Get right in there. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, seriously. I just, I love this. I mean, and it's so, so easy, right? Super, super duper easy. And I'm just kind of getting in there and getting that circle really nice and dark. And then getting some of the dark lines for a little bit of shading. Okay, and they'll saturate right in because the card is already wet. So it'll take on that shading really easily. You'll see that in just a moment. It's not pretty. I just love this. I could do this all night. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? And pretty fun. So the next thing I want to do is I want to do my leaves. And so the same thing um, is with the leaves. Now, the leaves, I'm pretty much going to, sorry, it's a little bit off camera because I'm running out of room, but I'm going to do it in the green. Okay which is the olive vine. Not too much shading going on in this one. I'm going to keep it pretty green. Okay. And what I like to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and um, use it just plain without any water there. So that it's a little bit darker. And same with right here. Just like so. Fabulous. And don't worry about going over the lines. It's just like part of it. Half of it is going to be covered anyway. All right. And I want you to, I want you to see it's really saturated, right? That's what you want because that's how you know the color has actually gone through on the watercolor. Okay. Because if it's not saturated, your color is going to fade as soon as you dry it. Okay. So just something to watch. You always want to look at the back. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my baby wipe and give this a very quick wipe. Just like so. And I just need one more baby wipe. Just one more. One, one more. All right. Fabulous. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some, this is called Super Heavy Gesso, and I love to use it. And in order to create kind of that cool tone on here, I'll show you how to do that. I take my finger, okay? And I go on my mat first and almost like warm up that gesso. And then I go ahead and I almost in a circular motion start to create like a nice little cloud. Okay. I'm hoping you're learning something new today. The whole point of my shows is I always want you to learn something that you haven't learned before or you haven't done before. Okay. So I'm hoping that that is occurring tonight for you. All right, just like that. Okay, I know the lighting's a little bit weird. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry this with my heat gun. Sometimes I go in the back as well and just give it a quick heat set.
Okay, I'm not heating it all the way. I'm leaving some of it a little bit wet because I'm actually gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of water just on this side, okay? And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my teal, okay? Just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that green that I had used earlier, okay? And taking even more water and allowing them to just kind of drip. Don't worry if it drips on the flowers. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that watercolor effect. And then you can kind of get that yellowy. Okay, it's really pretty. It's really, really fun to create this way. Okay, you're gonna apply a little bit more. And you'll see how that gesso kind of resists a little bit, which is really, really fun, right? Okay, maybe a little bit more like this. And then you'll take your paintbrush, as long as it's clean, and you'll move some of that color into here. Okay. And then if you have a little bit of that blue in your spray left, you give it just a little bit. Fabulous. I really, really love that. So I'm going to give this a quick heat set, dry it up. Do we have any questions, you guys? I know, isn't that fun? Um, yep. Yeah. Can you can you use gesso on stamps as a resist? Sure. For sure. I don't see why not. I do not see why not. Okay. So the next thing, oh, it's pretty wet still. Hang on. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, black coal, okay, which is a um, another chalk ink, and I'm going to use that same stamp that I used earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it right there, and do the same thing about right there, okay, just around the edges and a little bit right there. Sorry, I'm off camera. Sorry about that. Just like that, and then. If you put a little bit of water right away, it'll run. And that's kind of what I want at first. But once you heat set it, it's set. I just I just want a little bit of that black runniness on there, just like I did on here. See how it's like black cloudiness? That's kind of what you want. Okay. But you got to do that right away because once it's dry, it's permanent. Okay. Just like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to give it one last heat set. Sorry about all this heating. This is kind of the process you need to go through to create this. They do, they're made out of watercolor paper. Yay! Sherry Mendoza is on. How are you? They are watercolor paper, they're awesome. I know, right? Aren't these fabulous? You must get some of these. All right, now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my second um, background stamp, which is this one right here. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my nails today. And I'm going to take the Old Road, which is kind of a grayish black. It's more gray than anything, okay? 
and I'm going to stamp this. Oh, this stamp, I'm sorry, is um, uh, 542106, and you'll see it in a moment because it's hard to see when it's, um, do you see it? I know it's really hard to see, but it's kind of that scriptive writing. Sorry, it's a little bit off. Okay, and just like that. Okay, and just very randomly stamping. It just gives it a little bit of texture, nothing crazy. And then what we want to do is we want to really make it pop, right? So in order to make it pop, we actually want to take our brushed corduroy. It's Distress Ink by Tim Holtz, okay, and Ranger. And I'm going to take my Distress Tool, which is up here. Come on, baby, come out. Sorry about that. And then I'm just going to go around the edges. And it's going to give it that really beautiful distressed look. Almost finish it off a little bit. And then we'll add our butterfly and our little saying. Okay. Do you see that? Really pretty, right? And now it's like really vintage, which is awesome. It just kind of almost finishes it off, right? And so the next thing, I'm using a lot of stamps today. The next stamp I'm going to grab, I'm going to use this butterfly right here. This one is 551070. Okay, and I'm just going to take it really quick, right out of the packaging, just like that. And I'm going to take Old Road, I'm going to stamp right on it, just like that. And I'm going to stamp this puppy about right here. Okay, just like that. Super cute, right? Lovely. And then for the little saying, I'm actually going to be using a Unity stamp uh, stamp that I have, which I use all the time. I just I love the stamp set. It's um, this is it's called Imagine It, okay, by Unity Stamp. And I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to stamp with it something a little bit different, which I thought I had right in front of me, but apparently I don't. Oh, here's one. I don't know where the other one went. I'm going to use my Pit Artist Pen. I find it's really nice and dark and uh, it stamps really, really well for um, those images that you really want to see the writing. I should use a stamping block, but you guys know me and stamping blocks. We don't get along, so I'm not doing it. All right, and I'm just going to apply that right there. Just like so. Ta-da, look at that, gorgeous, right? Can you guys see that? Really pretty. Don't you like this? Honestly, this is like the best thing ever. It's also from um, Design Memory Craft. All right, perfect. So now what I'd like to do is from one of my papers from the collection, I have some pieces left over here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a mat as soon as I wipe some of this off or it's gonna get everywhere. I know I'm kind of running out of time, so I'm kind of hurrying now, as you can hear by my voice. Now I'm kind of panicky. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this down. This card's really quick. And we're just going to create a little mat. Okay. Just like so. We're going to mat this puppy. A really simple mat. Nothing crazy. And about, I'm going to take, you know, leaving it at about a quarter of an inch on each side. Okay. That's about what you want to do. And because the edges are rounded here, I'm going to go ahead and round the edges with my corner rounder here. And then I'm going to take so that the paper doesn't get so that it doesn't look so stark white, I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice little ink up with my Distress Tool. Okay. Just like that. Last but not least, I'm going to take whoops, my paper. And I don't know if you guys know, but Purima has um, cardstock, which is awesome, and it's textured paper pad. So I'm going to take a black one. Okay, right here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm going to, oops, this way though. This way, this way. What am I doing? Yeah, about this way. I'm going to map this, okay? 
So we're gonna and I'm gonna move the camera up just a little bit so you guys can see me a little bit better. Okay. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that I did here, and I'm actually going to fold it just like this. Because you guys know I don't measure a flipping thing. Because I hate measuring anything. I'm just not the measuring type of girl. Unless it's for a class, I don't measure. You know what I'm saying? If I'm doing a class for you, I will measure. Otherwise, no thank you. Just not doing it. Okay, just like so. And then because we want to make sure that it's kind of all the same in unison, you want to go ahead and then round the edges. Okay. And then your card is complete. Okay. So cute little card, really fun and easy, right? Two cards, right? Awesome. Super fun. So we're on to the last card. And do we have time for the last card, Carrie? Can we do it? Can I get it done? You think so? You think I can get it done? All right, let's do it. This is the last card. I don't think it'll take too long. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card stock. This is the one I didn't actually prep, but that's okay. I prepped every other one except for this one. And this one I'm going to cut at a regular card size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, I believe. So really, so four and a quarter would be eight and a half. Eight and a half. like that okay and I'm hoping that's the right size or let's see ha <laughs> ha it isn't what size is it who cares we'll do that after let's get um, I'll tell you the size in a moment see this is why I don't measure okay <laughs> oh god all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the pink and the pink is the old rose and I'm gonna do the exact same technique on here okay you guys are kind of getting the technique um, that I've been using tonight, right? It's pretty easy, pretty simple to follow, right? Not too, too hard. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give this whole thing a nice spray. And we're gonna go ahead and just get this card. This one's really, really easy. Get this card really nice and pinky, okay? This is for all you shabby chicers. And as you notice, I didn't use any flowers on the other one. So I had to create one with flowers. And do you remember what I said? You have to be able to see it in the back. Okay. And I'm adding even a little bit on here and I can go ahead and even spray it and move it around. Okay. Just like that really really pretty and you can really move that ink and so I want to go ahead and I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller watercolor brush and to paint the little birdies and I think I'm going to paint them like a little bit of green and yellow this time just for fun so this is that um, Colt's foot stamens and what is this olive vine okay and I'm going to spray a little bit of water on both and I'm going to go ahead and get the little yellow body right in there. A little bit of the green. Just like that. I don't know, is there green and yellow birds? I guess there is, right? I think there is. Okay, this card will be really nice and quick. I promise and then we'll add just a little bit of this guy in there just for fun just for the wings just for them to pop a little bit how fun is that aren't they adorable adorbs I love them I love them all right so we're gonna wipe this off and we're gonna give this card a quick heat set
and before I completely dry this when it's still a little bit wet you want to take your Prima distress tool and you're gonna start ripping some of the edges you're gonna get see how this one's like really ripped around the edges that's what you want to do but you want to do that while it's wet otherwise you're not going to really get that same effect where the watercolor paper kind of rips apart that's kind of what you want just be careful you're not completely ripping your paper okay but that's kind of what you want to do with a distress tool I love the Prima distress tool it's so awesome and you almost want to create rips all right just like that all around the edges All right, perfect. And I'm gonna give it a quick heat set to dry it all up. We're almost done. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my distress ink, same one that I used earlier, which was gathered or sorry, brushed corduroy. Okay, and I'm gonna get all around the edges of my fabulous little tag, just like so. Really get in there. And I love it when I just take the actual ink pad and get on the edges because it gets the edges really nice and dark, right? So you want to go ahead and do that. And it gives it that other um, extra edge, right? Just like so. Isn't that cute so far? And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to take the next, the same stamp that I had used earlier, which was those funky words. And you want to take knotted wood, which is another one of your um, chalk inks okay and you're gonna give that a little bit of a stampin and I like to roll my stamps okay versus like just stamping straight so you don't get those straight lines okay so when you stamp you just want to roll okay just a little technique that I've learned over the years and now I'm gonna take this is just an old uh, or just a, a lid from one of my glues and I'm gonna take some distress ink vintage photo distress ink and this is the re -inker. And I like to do this technique all the time in my stuff, and I'm just going to pour some around the lid, okay? And I'm just going to stamp and stamp, okay? Super fun, and you'll see it'll start to bleed into the paper. And then I'm going to do one more for fun, just down here. There we go. Love that. Super cute, super easy, okay? Artsy fartsy. And we'll dry it really quick. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking my flowers and my sprays. But before I do that, I'm going to grab some of these um, fabulous Prima resists, these canvas resists. These are, what's the number? Is 551629. And they're like a 12 by 12, but all I'm using is, you know, a small bit about, you know, I'm not even using that much, but that's kind of what I'm going to use, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and cut. All I need it for is some leaves. So I just need some of the leaves off of here. So I'm going to cut this one and this one. Just the leaves. That's all I want out of that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my green ink, the olive vine, and stamp right on there, okay? and then give it a quick spray. 
and watch the resist pop through. And uh, you can even take your paintbrush and move it around a little bit. All right. Do you see that? Aren't they so cute and perfect? I just love them. I just absolutely love them. So we're going to wipe that off. Okay. We're going to dry them up. Perfect. They dry pretty darn quick. So I'm going to move them off to the side. And now I'm going to take my flowers. And these are brand new flowers, by the way, you guys. So you can be really excited about it. Look at this gorgeousness. Oh my goodness. Do you guys see the gold trim on them? Stunning. This one is called Bella's. And it's 570-958. Okay. They are awesome. I love them. So we're going to go ahead and... Put that one down and did I put another one down there oh just that one and then we're gonna take some of these these are new as well from and they really go really well with the lifetime collection by the way and they're my favorite color it's uh, called Abby and it's five seven one eight one eight okay and we're just gonna take one of these which one did I grab earlier I think it was like one like this but who cares that one works all right, just perfect. And we're going to go ahead and take, I like to use Beacon 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac or something like that. And then I go ahead and put a little a gob right there. It's the first thing I do. And I'm going to put it down just like that. And then I go ahead and I, I apply my leaves after because that's just how I roll. It's just how I roll, you know, people? And I'm going to go ahead and... Put a little bit of glue right there. And ta-da. I love these canvas resists. Like, they're just so awesome. We're almost done. And we're going to tuck that one about right there. Okay, just like that. And then last but not least, we're going to add this little puppy. Actually, no, we got one more step before we move on. And then this is the last piece of that. And I love these. These are uh, Cradle Robin 552879. And um, I know you can actually get these at Hobby Lobby. I found that out today. Just an FYI. Don't ask me how I know. I just know. Okay. Actually, I do know because I've actually bought some of these when I was in the States at Hobby Lobby. So that's another reason I know. I just forgot about that. And then we just kind of add that right on there. Okay, do you like that? Cute, right? All right, so the next thing that you want to do to create the little thing, and then we're almost done. I keep saying that. We're almost done. We're almost done. But really, we're not. Is um, I'm going to take these delusion stamps, and this one is called The Right Words. And I'm going to take this one. Being happy doesn't mean everything's perfect. It just means you decide to see beyond the imperfections. And I love that. You can tell I use that stamp all the time. Because I just, that saying just rings true to me so much. I love it. And so that's what we're going to use. And I'm just going to grab um, a scrap, scratch piece of paper from the collection. So it's one of these. But I'm going to use the back side, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and take... My Stamper's Big Brush Pen that I had used earlier in the black, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and ink that up really, really well. Oops, I missed a piece. You can see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just give it a nice stamp. I don't mind that it's imperfect. I actually don't mind that at all. And so what you want to do with this is you want to go ahead and cut this out. Sorry, Carrie, I know I'm over time. Am I over time? Yeah, I'm, I am by like five minutes. Okay. I'm almost done. Last card. This is the last bit of the card. And we are done. 
sorry to, uh, I know I'm losing viewers here quick. And then we're just going to cut this up. Okay. Could have done this before. I didn't even think to cut the stamp. And we could actually leave it like this. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to fussy cut this out. Just like so. I know time zones are um, a pain in the butt because some of you have to go to sleep, right? Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take some foam dots and we're going to prop this puppy up. Okay, just like that. And we're going to stick that right there. And then these two, I'm going to do them a little bit separately. Just for fun. And I can't grab them because my nails are so stupid today. Oh, look, my thing is dried out. Okay. Just like that, right there. And ta da. Okay. Perfect. Whoops, that's a big gob of glue. Just like that. All right. Really super pretty. And then all you need to do now is just literally mount it onto a piece of cardstock. That's about it. So if you want, I can do that really quickly just for fun. Or we can just leave it like that because I know you know how to mount this on a piece of cardstock. Okay. You mount it on a piece of cardstock and it'll look like this. And then you can go ahead and add whatever you want to it on the inside. Really pretty, really easy, right? One lucky viewer hopefully will get um, these cards because now I have all these cards that I don't know what to do with. So let me switch cameras really quick so we can do announcements. Hello, hello, my non-makeup face today. <laughs> I'll, uh, you know what, I'll, um, I'll send these cards out to someone special. I don't know. I gotta send them out. <laughs> I, we're, I, sorry, I didn't mean to, I, we're not picking them tonight. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Maybe I'll do like a, a, a thing on my blog. That's what I'll do. All right. <laughs> you are special sherry sorry i didn't mean that <laughs> thank you all right there's some announcements so let's do that really quick because carrie needs to go to bed okay um anaheim art venture you're coming right yes say yes i'm coming to see you lee more okay it's uh art venture january 8th and 9th you'll be there right before cha correct great I want to see your registrations. Um, breast cancer crop, you guys, uh, at Prima Outlet Store is September 21st, uh, noon to 9 p.m. And the cost is $20. And uh, to sign up, you need to send uh, Frank an email. And it's uh, frank at primamarketinginc.com if you want to sign up for the breast cancer crop. Okay? Again, September 21st, noon to 9 p.m. All right? And then... Uh, the next show is our beautiful, wonderful Carrie, Miss Carrie herself, and it's at 11, bleh, it's at 11 a.m. Pacific stand, Standard Time, and she's going to be showcasing the new Finnabar mechanicals, like the new metals, so you must be there. You must be there. That's it. That's all I got for you. That's it. What else do you want from me? That's all I got. So I'm just going to stop the recording for those of you that are watching um, after the show. Thank you for coming.